So um, I'd like to, uh, we're going to uh, move on to our uh, first keynote uh, presenter. Um, uh, David Grossman is with us today. Uh, we've collaborated with David a number of times in the past. Um, he was uh, uh, a guest speaker at one of our webinars and had the dis distinction of uh, getting over 1,000 registrants, which is the, the first. So uh, clearly, people are very interested in what he has to say. Uh, David is an expert at uh, helping organize, uh, organizations maximize the effectiveness of their communications. Uh, he's a speaker, consultant, coach, uh, and writer. He's written a number of books, the most recent of which he's graciously um, provided each of you a copy, uh, and it's at your, uh, your desk. So I, I hope you'll uh, enjoy that. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome David Grossman to the stage. Let's give him a warm welcome. Thanks very much. Good morning, everybody. So t let me try that again. Good morning, everybody. So today I have uh, brought with me some best of the best practices when it comes to internal communications. I'm fortunate uh, to be on the road with clients uh, two to three days a week. And so I, as I was thinking about what could I bring for you that would be of value, I brought some of the best of the best that I see. And as I'm sharing these uh, strategies and tips and tools and techniques and approaches with you, I'd ask you to think about, are there some of these that you're doing? And if so, take a moment to celebrate and smile and be proud and feel great about what you're doing. If you're doing something that's even better than what I'm sharing, I'd love to talk to you after my presentation. If what I'm sharing is a pain point for you and you haven't quite um, like started yet, hopefully what I share will provide some inspiration, some possibilities, some thoughts about how you might get started, what might be possible for you as we think about how do we elevate what we do? How do we add even greater value for our organizations? And here are some of the companies that I want to say thank you to whose work you will see. I am very humbled to be an amazing company every day um, that I go to work. So here's the topics that I've got for you today. We'll talk about elevating capability in a couple of areas. I'll start with the communication function itself. How do we elevate capability there? I'll move on to talking about ourselves as communication professionals. We'll then talk about leaders. How do we help leaders be better in what they do? Then I'll talk about extending their impact as we think about activating strategy or if there are other initiatives that we want to ensure are um, at the top of employees' minds as we think about driving performance inside organizations. I'll talk about message delivery, and then I'll finish with a little bit around evolving culture, and then just a, a little bit about measurement as well. And feel free to jump in if you've got questions or thoughts as we move forward. So in the area of elevating capability, so as we think about the communications function itself, what is some of the best of the best that I am seeing? Here from Microsoft IT, is a North Star, as they call it. This is their, their vision, their aspiration, their end game goal. Do you have one of those, whether you call it a North Star or not? And the way that they put this together, it's, it's done in a very personal way. Connect with me, inspire me, and I will act. When you communicate to me, make it personal. Put it in my terms, and I'll listen. Inspire me and connect me to the bigger picture. Help me know how I can contribute, and tell me why I should care I am up for the challenge. They decided to write it in the first person as they use this North Star with many of the senior leaders that they work with to help them understand what is it that we do? How do we add value? How are we uniquely qualified to help our organization? And to that North Star, they added this model. And my thought for us is every team should have a model, an approach, a way in which they work as far as how they think about communications. In this case, they've got seven Ms. And if you look at the columns, it's the topic in the first column, the second column is what it is, and the third column is whose role is it. And what I love about this is, so imagine you're working with a set of leaders and you share this model with them as you help them understand, here's how we work. This is how we create a partnership that gets at your goals, Mr. and Ms. Leader, to drive the kind of performance that all of us want. And what I love about this model, so it starts with a mandate, 
they use the word mandate to represent so what do we want to get done in the business? Everything we're doing in communications needs to be grounded in the business. So what is that Mr. or Ms. business leader? Then it's up to us to think about message and meaning. How do we best articulate what you want to get done, that mandate, in ways that people can hear it, where it's clear? Then how do we motivate? How do we model the way? How do we make it personal and relevant? That's the me part. And lastly, how do we measure it? Now, Notice how many responsibilities leaders have as we look at this and how many responsibilities we have. And what I love about this model is it shows the really great partnership that is so critical. As good as we are in the communications department, we cannot drive performance alone. We can only do it in partnership with the senior leadership and with people, leaders of the team. So a North Star and a model, I love this idea. Do you have a model, an approach, a way that you think about overall communications to help leaders know there's a rhyme and a reason to how we do the great work that we do? Do you have a one-pager, this is for a corporate affairs department, that codifies everything that's important for your team for your department. And I'll show you a good number of one-pagers today. I call them artifacts. These are, in an easy format, a way to put together the most important pieces and parts of, it could be a company strategy, in this case it's a department strategy, and notice that it's based on what are the organizational goals, and then we're thinking about for corporate affairs, what's the vision, what's the mission, mission? how do we impact the business, what are the objectives, principles, who are our audiences, and the deliverable is, uh, let me say that differently, the process is as important as the deliverable. So you look at this and it's lovely words on a page. The process of getting there is really about driving alignment with the team. Who are we? What do we do? How do we add value? How do we talk about it? How do we prioritize? So the process of getting to this one page are hugely important because the end result when used well is it changes how we think, it changes how we work, it changes how we prioritize, and it helps us think about the department, the team that we are yet to become. So codifying who we are, what's important, going through the process, a best practice that I wanted to share with you share with you. And of course, there's some details too behind it around just some of the specifics as far as the specific teams. Here's one in the employee space from the former DuPont pioneer, where the team got together to think about vision and mission. And again, this is not words for words sake. All of these words and concepts were selected very carefully. But the real outcome of all of this work is to align a team around, this is how we show up. This is how we talk about who we are. And also, in many cases, um, what we do and what we don't do. So the vision and the mission, what I wanted to highlight for you here are some guiding principles. And today, hopefully, you'll see I'm going to share with you a lot of diverse examples. And some of these may be relevant for you. Others may not be as relevant, given your department, your industry, or sort of where you are in your journey. But hopefully, over the course of what I cover today, there'll be a couple things that can help you take your job and team forward. So what I love about these principles is these are the ways in which this team will operate. We ensure as much as possible that employees get pioneer news from pioneer first, not from external sources. Our communication plans are research-based and begin and end with our audiences, their needs, and the outcomes that we seek. So these are principles, not just for the team to get them aligned, but these are principles that inform how we talk about what we do. How do we talk to leaders about our role, how we help, how we add the most value? So getting to a vision, a mission, guidelines, you can call them whatever you want. I don't care what you call them. It's more about what does this mean? How do you bring this to life? How does this inform how you make decisions every day about what you do? Once you've got a sense of that North Star, that overall strategy, you're probably thinking about, the best organizations are thinking about people, are thinking about process, they're thinking about structure. In the area of people then, do we have, given where we're headed, some of the new opportunities in the business and seeing so much more of a need for change management today, given the changes in so many industries and businesses, so much of a greater need for higher level consulting, um, inside organizations, does our team have the skills they need to succeed? And how do we know? So this organization did some listening, 
that we did a quantitative with them, and we looked at, in order to achieve our business plan that we have, what skills do we need in our department? What are most, which skills are most important? And then how are we doing at those skills? And of course, a good skills assessment will yield lots of diagnostics. I just wanted to highlight this one for you. It's a four quadrant grid that um, looks at overall skills and helps the team know where do they need to improve, what's the best practice, what do they need to monitor, maintain. I've also decided um, over time, every presentation needs a good four quadrant grid. So this is mine for today. So you can see here, where does the team need to focus and prioritize when it comes to communication planning, measurement, messaging, influence, best practices, storytelling, and giving and getting feedback. I hear a lot about this wish. Communications need to be more strategic. Being strategic is all about choices. How do we bring choices to the table? How do we prioritize and make decisions to say, you know what? This is the better path. Diagnostics like this, doing a really thoughtful approach to saying, does our team have the skills we need? And how cool would it be if we could do some development where we have some gaps to help everybody continue to grow and evolve and be able to do their best work? Once you've got that, you're ready to do some development sessions. And a number of our clients are creating curriculums for their communication teams. There can be very formal curriculums. Others of them are doing very simple brown bags. But what they're starting to do is bring some standard operating approaches and practices to the table. And that's a theme you'll hear from me today, this idea of standard operating practices. All of our partners at the table inside organizations have standard ways they do things. And let's face it, so much of what we do, it's the same kinds of things again and again and again. So for those high value, high impact tasks, we should have a standard way of doing them. Whether that's how we create communication plans, whether that's how we think about messaging, whether that's how we think about change. So the cool thing this organization did as part of its development was start to build in some standard ways of doing work. And these are just a couple examples of that. In the area of capability for teams, there are a couple other work streams. Behaviors and daily actions, and you'll hear me talk about this when I talk a little bit about culture. One of the challenges I often see in organizations is, so internal communications at its finest is about moving to people to action, right? We're all about performance, driving organizational performance. And oftentimes what I see is, we say we want these behaviors, but we don't really operationalize them. We don't take the behaviors and say, this is the behavior and this is specifically what it looks like. The screen I like to use sometimes is, if I had a video camera and I was video, videoing someone doing that behavior, what would I see? Because in many cases, we want to um, drive to behavioral change, but we haven't identified well enough what specifically are those behaviors. So I wanted to mention that here as we think about the competencies that we need to succeed, but it's also a critical um, skill and something needed when we talk about culture as well. I talked about standard operating practices, protocol for vehicles. How do you get into the publication? How is it that we do news releases, for example? Whatever it is that we do, what's the protocol for getting into using the key vehicles that we have? Are there some gates? Are there gatekeepers that we need to get through, for example? Have you codified all of that? Service levels. Well, what do we say yes to and what do we say we, we can't do but I'll help you figure out a solution to? Um, some of our clients have defined actual service levels. Do you take notes in meetings for leaders? Do you write emails for leaders? And if so, which leaders and in what situations? When don't you do that? Um, we're all, we've got way too much work, right? We've got too much email, we need to prioritize. So some of the best teams are codifying, here's what we do, here are the service levels that we will provide, and for those other things, we'll help you figure out a solution, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna do it. And then lastly, a scorecard. How, how are we doing at saying, here's how we're measuring what's most important. Here's a great example of a, a scorecard, and you know, I think this is work in progress for many of our organizations. A lot of this is still outputs versus outcomes. How can we get more to outcomes? But do we have a scorecard that helps us regularly look at work, what we're doing, and how we're doing it, as well as a scorecard that can be a reporting mechanism for leadership as well? And does anyone know what we're doing? 
Those of us that are in big departments, we know what some of our colleagues are doing on behalf of the business that we should be talking about, the ways in which we are moving the business forward. Here's a client that has codified some of their best successes, put them into case studies, and we actually did some message delivery training with them to help the team understand and know what everybody's doing and how do we talk about how this team is adding value, is moving the business forward in very specific kind of ways. All right, so that's capability for functions. Let me talk about for us as individuals. I talked earlier about um, some standard operating practices. I brought one of our most popular tools for you to have and to use if it is helpful for you. Many of the problems that I see in the communications process often stem from the root cause is we don't get started on a project well. And so, does that ring a bell? Sounds like it. So intake, the intake tool which you've got at your tables is designed to help you do that. There are three steps to it. Oh, and let me say this. So intake, if you've ever seen a therapist, your first session is intake. It's all about you. Who, who are you? What do you want to get done? What's your presenting problem? Or if you take your car to a car mechanic, the mechanics will want to know what do you hear, what do you see, what are you thinking uh, it might be, what, what do you know, what can you help me with? So three steps to the intake process. The first is to set it up as an exercise. The second is to ask open-ended questions. And the third is to talk next steps. So let me run through each of those for you. The first, you want to set this up as an exercise. So this is designed to help counter those drive-by drop-offs that many senior leaders are famous for, where you're like, ah, well, I've got all these questions, and they're like, bye bye And we aren't set up for success. We haven't said this is a partnership. There are things that I need to do quality work, so the intake form helps you do this. Um, this is designed, and you want to set it up like an exercise to help leaders know that there's a rhyme and a reason to how we do communications, and that you've got some questions that would be really helpful to set you up for success. So we set it up as an exercise. Imagine if you just went to a leader and you just started asking him questions. You may be like, well, why are you asking me these questions? So Mr. Ms. Leader, we've got this tool that we're using and I wanna talk with you about it. Here's what this might sound like. One of the things that we do when we start a new project in, in our organization today is do an intake session like this. It's designed to help ensure that I understand your needs and that we're best gonna be able to meet the needs that you have so everybody's successful. Here's how this works. I've got some questions for you today over the next 15 minutes. I'm gonna ask you some questions and at the end of that, I'm gonna ask you some thoughts and reflections that you might have based on some of the questions that I asked you. That's how you tee it up and then you're able to jump in. Here are the questions. This is just designed to be a frame and a starting point. So six questions to outcome. What's your desired business outcome? I was working with a senior leader recently and he started down the path of talking about his business outcome and about 15 seconds in and he stopped and he looked at me and he said, he said, David, I'm just giving you all this BS. He used the longer version of BS, by the way. And um, I, said, I said, no worries. I said, you don't need to know the outcome today. I said, but for us to be successful, we need to know what is the business outcome you seek? What will be different in the business after we do all of this work? Um, there's a watch out here. As you're thinking about outcome, communications is not an outcome. Communications is an enabler. Leaders will say, well, I want to inform. I want to get this out. I want to, none of that's an outcome. None of that's about the business. So in many cases, this is probably one of the toughest questions. Then it goes on to business environment, project success, target audience. And notice the target audience question, then what do we want them to do? How many times have you asked a leader the question, well, so the key audience is, what do we want them to do? And they look at you like you are speaking a foreign language. And that's a time to say, communications at its finest is about moving people to action. We need to know what, what, it, what is it that this communication will do for people? How do we want them to act? What are the project deliverables? What's your desired timing? That's the frame. So you may be, you may be thinking, well, David, I, I should know some of the answers to these questions. So if that's the case, then you just serve the questions up a little bit differently. So you might say, so as I'm thinking about this with you, I'm thinking the audiences are this and this. What do you think? Right? 
So that demonstrates our expertise as well. What you don't want to do is, and notice, by the way, all my questions are open-ended. Some of us need to work on our ability to ask open-ended questions because when we ask an open-ended question, there's a chance to get so much information back. There's the possibility of so much that we didn't know that, that is possible to come out versus a closed-ended question. So um, you're going to want to add to these questions and, and evolve them, but hopefully this is a good starting point for you as you think about um, intake. At the end, then, you're going to say, you know, now that we've had this conversation, I'd love to get a reflection from you on our conversation. Sometimes the leader will say, you know what? I had not thought about some of these things before. What an important insight. And you know what that means to me? I'd like to come back to you <laughs> with another half hour. And notice how compact this is. It's really compact. I want to come back to you in a week. Can we do that? I'm going to get going on our deliverables. It's not going to impact us getting going on the project. But I want to come back to you because it sounds like you're still thinking things through. How often do we do work and we're sort of figuring out what the business outcome is and we're figuring out what the plan is? It's not our job. We need to know the mandate. Then we're going to figure out how do we get that across to various audiences. And then lastly, you're going to want to talk about next steps here. So that's intake. One of the key tools as I think about an opportunity that many of us have where if we could start to think about this or use a piece or a part of the process, we could be even more effective. If you'll allow me, I wanted to get on my soapbox as I think about individual communication professionals. I'm going to move over here to my, soap my soapbox here. It's so interesting. Before I started my own business, I was at McDonald's. This idea of us continuing to work on our skills in the craft and not the skills as leaders continues to be out there. My wish is we continue to elevate how we lead inside organizations. And I remember being at McDonald's and it's the same today. When I was an embedded communicator inside a function, I got a tremendous amount of leadership development. When I was in the communications department, not so much. And it's a very fine, fine company and department. I learned a ton. I look back with only great thoughts about it. But that was an important learning for me. We, are, many of us, are working at the highest levels of our organizations with the senior most leaders, yet we haven't had the opportunity to continue to develop our skills as much as they have. And in one of the areas that I see the greatest opportunity for us as leaders is what I call respectful authenticity. How do we bring a point of view forward? We see the world in such different ways in many cases than others at the senior leadership table in such a valuable way. How do we bring that forward so leaders can hear it, so they can digest it, so they can take in what it is we bring to the table? Now, this idea of authenticity has been around for a long time. I've added the word respectful to it. I see this need both for leaders and for we really smart, capable communication professionals. I've added respectful which to get at some of the challenges that often come with the sort of vanilla case of authenticity. So I wanted just to spend a, a moment on this concept in the spirit of if you haven't started this journey yet, if you're not thinking about your journey as a leader, I'd ask you to consider it. And I've got a diagnostic for you too. If it's at all uh, of interest to you, this topic that you can do after just to help you start to think about authenticity. But in the meantime, let me just help you with quickly the definition, and then we'll continue on our journey today to look at some of the best of the best. So for me, a respectful authenticity has three components. The first is this idea of um, knowing yourself. Um, early in my career, I was fortunate to work with some amazing leaders who in many cases, um, they brought out the best in me. They made me feel great about what I did. They had more confidence in me in many cases than I had in myself. And for a 20-something young professional, was hugely motivating. So when it was my chance to lead, I thought to myself, OK, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So I tried what they did. I borrowed some of their strategies. Still, I made my share of mistakes until I found this out and realized this, that to be authentic, respectfully authentic, you don't need to be like anybody else. That being respectfully authentic is about being yourself, about knowing who you are, which is the first principle, about celebrating the uniqueness that is us, the imperfections that make us 
special and that help us lead in ways that others inside the organization may not be able to lead. Therein is a superpower that all of us have inside it. The question is, do you know who you are? And are you able to bring that forward, bring your best self forward every day in what we do? And I firmly believe, and Andrew said it well, there has never been a better time to be doing what we are doing. So how do we make the most of it? So know yourself is the first principle. The second is to be your best self. And this is all about self-awareness of acting in ways that are consistent with your values. Early in my career, I, I acted like a chameleon. Um, in many cases, I would change what I thought or felt based on somebody else because I wanted to be liked, I wanted to belong, I wanted to be seen as a senior counselor, I wanted to be at that table. And then I realized some of the challenges that came with being that chameleon and how could I not change who I was, but bring my best self forward regularly. And that in so many organizations today, that idea is even more possible, I think, than ever before. And lastly, and I'm just giving you a brief nugget here, there's so much we could cover on respectful authenticity. The last component, so know yourself, be your best self, is um, what I call having quiet courage as you interact with others. Because authenticity at its core is about the truth. First being truth with, truthful with ourselves and then with others. And is that a role inside organizations? We are the truth tellers in many cases. We say things to senior leaders that other people do not have the courage to. At least I hope that is part of what we do. We tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear in many cases. The challenge and opportunity is Authenticity is not about saying whatever you think or feel. We all know people who are a, well, the, excuse me, this is me, take it or leave it. Or I'm angry, and so I'm going to take it out on you. We all know people like that. Being authentic is, is not a license to be an SOB. <laughs> the challenge is how do we share our thoughts and perspectives in ways that others can hear it? We all know what others, when others share sort of too much information and what that feels like. So many times, too, we're sharing too much information, information that could be confusing, information that leaders can't digest or employees can't digest. And what happens? We just create confusion and anxiety and angst. So quiet courage is thinking about how do I share my truth to meet that person where they are, to be sensitive to their needs, and so that they can hear me and hear what I bring to the table, hear my point of view, my perspective, my thoughts about how we should proceed. So that's respectful authenticity, just a little bit. Um, be yourself, uh, be your best self, and then have quiet courage as you interact with others. So I'd, my, my wish is just, and hopefully you get a sense, my passion is just to elevate what we do, how we work, how we impact others because um, we do it in so many amazing ways. How can we do even more of it? All right, so I'll get off my soapbox on that. Thank you for indulging me for a moment. Hopefully that was valuable. So you've got the quiz if that's helpful to you. So we've talked about um, teams. We've talked about ourselves as individuals. Let's talk about leaders. How do we elevate leadership capability, and what does that look like? Most of us have 360s inside organizations that help leaders know how they're doing. This is a three, uh, 360 that is specifically about communication skills. How cool would it be for a leader who wants to work on communication skills for us to give them a really easy to use tool that can help them know how they're doing? 19 attributes, an open-ended question with some diagnostics as well to facilitate some conversation about what that leader is doing well and how they could be even better. Here's another way to think about how do we elevate leaders. And in this case, this client was looking at some of their bottom performing manufacturing plants. And we were looking at the plant in totality and sort of where is that plant from a maturity standpoint when it comes to communications. And in many cases, that's keyed off of the plant manager and his or her direct reports. And so I love this model that helps us look at in this case, it's a manufacturing plant. It could be a function. It could be a part of the world. It could be a market. And be able to say, uh, are you meeting minimum expectations? Where are you not? Where are you exceeding? And with it comes this amazing diagnostic. 
that looks at many of the components of high-performing teams, but all of this keyed off of the leader. Hugely powerful to bring into an organization. This plant, not doing so great. The great news is they've made significant improvements over the past six months based on a couple of the very simple but impactful actions that they could take here to continue to move forward in the process. Um, so a, a cool process that I think could be adapted to help leaders really look at and focus on big picture communications. This client also created, so we all know we can't serve everybody. We talked about service levels as something hugely important. We created a communications playbook. This is everything you need to, to know to do communications on your own. And what I love about this is it's got topics both big and small, know your audience, creating core messages, using effective channels, developing a cadence, building two-way dialogue, recognizing your team. You want to know how to do an effective town hall? It's in here. You want to know how to do walk around? It's in here. You want to know how to write an effective email to your team? It's in here. How cool that we are able to arm leaders with the tools that they need to be able to succeed. So it's available in print, it's available online, it's available in lots of ways. How fantastic would it be to have a playbook, a really comprehensive playbook? And you may have some pieces and parts, but as we think about how do we help um, leaders fish, not just do some of the work for them as well. And then of course, traditional training. Um, we're seeing lots of traditional training, mostly at leadership meetings or offsites. Um, and this is good old face-to-face, -face, let's dialogue, let's interact, let's do table exercises kinds of training around communications. That could be about delivering the messages around strategy for the organization. It, it could be about handling difficult situations that the leaders face, but it's all focused on really core content that's important for those leaders. All right, how do we extend strategy with those leaders? So leaders' top job in many cases bring their strategy to life inside the organization. Here's one of my new favorite tools. This was for a CEO new in position. Um, all of the research on each of the key audiences was compiled together, uh, together, it had never been done before, to create a resource to help that leader and the senior leadership team be as audience focused as they could be to really understand where some of their key audiences were coming from. Um, and shared some tips and tools and techniques for how best to do this. And this of course was a complement to the very traditional 100 day plan and the communication plan and set of messages that you might expect when you see a new CEO in position. We saw a one pager earlier. Here's a strategy one pager. As we're thinking about how do we activate everyone inside the organization to do their part to know how they fit in to deliver on the strategy. Here's one of the key artifacts for one organization that brings together all of the core components. Look at this as sort of the DNA of the organization, much like we saw for the communication team earlier. We're working with a client now. They've got so many different pieces and parts, so many PowerPoint presentations, but no one said, what's most important here? How do we stitch these pieces together? I like to think about it sometimes like, this client has a closet full of separates, and employees see that closet full of separates, and we need an outfit. We need an outfit that fits really well, that fits together. So one pager is like this. When we do work around strategy communications, we're always looking at, are there artifacts like this? Have folks thought about what is most important to this organization? Because everything should tie back. Everything should ladder back here, which also says what things aren't important. And this helps us know how we can best communicate. Um, once you've got that one-pager strategy artifact, one of the things that, that we're seeing is interactive tablet tools. So how do we take our communication tools and resources and put it in the hands of leaders? In this case, it's to help them articulate and talk about strategy with their teams, to arm them, to help them with, here's how, at this organization, we are talking about strategy. Here are the words that we're using, here are some of the examples, here are our goals. And by the way, Mr. and Ms. Leader, it's up to you to say, here's how this is relevant for our team. Here's what's important for us, here's what our goals are, and let's talk about how you, everybody around the table, fits in. So the tablet tools can be big picture strategy, they could also be about key initiatives as well. And then one of the best practices we're seeing as well is anytime we're sharing tools, we're sharing some just-in-time training at exactly the same time because of how important it is. We're giving you not just the tools, but some tips and techniques 
I can't tell you how many times, and leaders don't say this, but they're not quite sure how to use some of the tools that we give them. And worse yet, they're not held accountable. They haven't been trained in many cases on how to use some of the tools. So this is at least a great step forward. Huddle tools, um, more and more, um, how do we maximize those start of shift huddles and provide some of the resources that are relevant? And then lastly here, uh, video library. So this was the coolest thing. Um, of course, we're seeing lots of video today. Video is fantastic. People learn in different ways. It's hugely helpful. This is a video library for a senior leader of ethics and compliance. There are about 20 vignettes uh, translated into multiple languages. This video library was created in a half day with a senior leader through an interview process. We got 20 vignettes. This is saving the senior leader from traveling around the globe, in many cases going to lots of different meetings, but rather he or she or their communications expert can send a few of these videos without them having to be there. And these videos can be used in so many other ways. What I love about this is just in a limited period of time with a senior leader, how this can really extend their visibility and leadership. And that's what we should be doing. How do we help our leaders extend their visibility and impact? All right, message delivery. Every organization should have an enterprise-wide set of messages. I can't tell you how many cl clients I've been with recently, and we may be working on a piece or a part um, of what's important. And of course, we want to ensure that whatever we're communicating ladders up to the enterprise-wide messages. And you say, well, help me understand what are the enterprise-wide messages you're trying to get across so we can connect. And they look at you like, what do you mean enterprise-wide messages? So my belief is every organization should have a set of enterprise-wide messages. And getting to this process of enterprise-wide messages, and there are lots of great ways to do it. You may have a, your favorite tool to do that. Um, the real value is driving alignment around what are those messages. And this should make our jobs easier and save us time because every communication then should come back to and ladder up to this core set of messages. Those of us that are in large organizations, global organizations, one of the challenges we face is how do we ensure our messages are localized, are relevant locally, but also ladder up. So recently, one of the things that we worked on was, um, so imagine you've got local communicators across the globe. You give them some pre-work um, assignments to sort of collect what's most important in that part of the world and in that region to bring to a half-day session where you run through the enterprise-wide messages and you do a, a sort of the doctors is in kind of session to help them create their own localized message map. That's something that we did recently. It was the fastest, most efficient way that we've ever seen creating local messages for across the globe that ladder up to the enterprise-wide messages yet are, are totally relevant to what's happening on the ground and doing it in, in quick order. And the communicators learned a ton in the process as we think about what are messages? What are the most important messages? How do we articulate them? How do we add inspiration? How do we create that emotional connection in the messages that we um, put together? So a really fantastic process. A complementary tool to the message map, whatever you call it, to have an enterprise-wide set of messages is what I call a leader communicator platform. And I'm gonna move over here just because I need to move over here to demonstrate it. So every leader, Every senior leader should have his or her own set of core messages for the organization. So this is not unlike a political platform. And this is best for a leader who's new in position, for a CEO, for a senior leader who is on the move, a move on the rise, high potential, or a senior leader who's going through a significant amount of change. The purpose is for leaders to help be who they are and drive the kind of messages that they want. When completed, this saves communication professionals between 20 and 30 hours a month because we've got the core set of messages codified up front. It's really easy to populate tools. So this is for the head of a new hospital for uh, NYU Langone Health System. And the other reason why I wanted to show you this was also this idea, again, of getting our tools into the hands of our leaders in a really easy kind of format. Here's his elevator speech. And this has the same kind of functionality you would expect. Here's the start of his message map. He's got messages around who we are, 
where we are today, what's possible, how we get there, becoming world class, what we own. So in essence, and then there's some supporting messages that go through this, uh, that, go, that amplify those supporting messages as well. So here is his full story, his overall story that he wants to get across. So depending on the audience, the communication opportunity, he's got the ability or his Cracker Jack communication professional can help him tailor those messages. He's got a set of default stories that are all about him to help him self-disclose. Every leader should have a story library. It's part of how they help create an emotional connection with employees. And then what's powerful about this is we also are suggesting based on our work with him and um, his communication professional feedback, here's some things he needs to work on in the communication space. So this is not just about words, but it's also about actions. What are the actions that he needs to drive? And so his platform, what's important, um, what he needs to get across uh, in one place. Hugely powerful, hugely helpful for us. So hopefully you're getting the sense about this idea of driving alignment around a tool, codifying messages up front before we start to populate and have a gazillion um, tools that we need to edit and all the messages are different. So again, um, standard operating practices. And this is something you can do at home. How do we get some of the key critical leaders in our organizations to have their own platforms that sync up with the enterprise-wide messages? All right, I'll, I'm just gonna talk briefly because I wanna make sure we have time for questions here on culture. A couple things about culture. I talked earlier about this idea of behaviors. One of the linchpins of successful culture change is around really codifying what are the behaviors that we seek, how are we gonna get there. For this organization, they were wanting to improve service and a couple other things. The sort of internal brand was around we make great happen. What was cool about this, what was so important is that great was operationalized by audience into behaviors and daily actions. So no matter who, who you were, we helped you know what does great look like? What does great mean? Another organization, again, getting to a one-pager. The other headline here for you on culture, strategy and culture are best communicated together because it is the what and the how of the organization. So oftentimes we work on broad culture, cultural efforts. We see clients, they want to evolve their culture. So let's evolve the culture and ensure we're delivering on the strategy at the same time. So put strategy and culture together in how we communicate. Here's an example of that. And then how do we bring people into the mix? These everyday heroes that are already delivering on the culture we aspire to. How do we put the spotlight on them and feature them as we think about reinforcing the behaviors that we want to drive? Here's another uh, internal brand around ethics and compliance that was this sort of tag. It's not just a nice to have tag, but really speaks to some of the outcomes and behaviors this group wants to, to drive. One last topic, and then we'll get to your questions and thoughts and perspectives. Many organizations have engagement surveys. Fantastic. There are so many terrific organizations out there that do engagement surveys. What we often find, tell me if this is your experience, is that there isn't enough information to help us know from a communications perspective, what do we want to stop, what do we want to start, what do we want to continue? Some of the organizations that are leading in this space are doing their own communications assessment as a complement to their engagement survey. In this case, you may do a, in your engagement survey one year and imagine doing a communication survey the next year. But it's not just any old communication survey. I think we're good at evaluating specific events. Town hall, for example, and how was this town hall and what what'd you learn? Did it help you with line of sight and those kinds of things? Terrific. What we often don't do, though, is look at communications holistically as a system. And so this tool looks at how do we bring together and look at all the dimensions that are part of, when an employee thinks about communications, they don't think about who it's from or what department or any of those things. They just think communications. But we need to divide it into dimensions and sectors. And so how powerful would it be if we were able to do that with a tool like this or another tool that you have that gives us diagnostics, that helps us know what messages are resonating, but all in the systems context. We're gonna look at communications as a system. And here was just one organization that did this. And a new CEO 
in many cases, some of her, after working on having a plan to get at some of the challenges that they saw in communication, some of the vehicles that they needed to stop, some of the vehicles that they needed to tweak, there were some d double digit improvements um, when it came to her scores and the overall scores. You'll see the bars go up and down a little bit, but the overall trajectory was hugely positive. So how powerful would it be if we could give an overall sort of system, systematic read to how communications is flowing? Ooh, holy cow, we've been through a lot. Um, how do we continue to have the courage, the quiet courage, as I call it in many cases, to continue to raise our voices, to bring new ideas and concepts, to bring the real value that we can provide, that we know we can provide to our organizations. And I think part of the question for us is, what are some high leverage places that we can start? Where do we want to start? And would, would love to dialogue with you, uh, answer any questions that you have as you continue to think about where do you want to start? How can you elevate what you do um, so you can keep doing more things on behalf of the business? So love to get your thoughts, questions, musings. Great, David. Thank you. For some questions. Okay. So there's two ways uh, folks can ask questions. The old fashioned way with the hand in the air and we've got <laughs> microphones. Um, we also have the ability for you to ask questions in the app and uh, they'll pop up here and you can um, vote on questions. Uh, uh, we'll be doing that throughout the day. One of the reasons to do that is, David, I don't think we're going to have you long after this. So um, uh, if you're not able to get your question answered today uh, or right now, um, um, David will be able to uh, uh, get back to you. Um, in through the app. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I know I covered a lot fast, but I know we're a really diverse group and I wanted to ensure there were some nuggets for everybody. So feel free to email me or call me, um, text me, communicate with me through the app, whatever's easiest for you and, and, and I'll get back to you in as timely a way as I can. And we've got a question here on the floor. And Hi, you're in the American Express seats, I see. We've got this uh, cool microphone. Believe it or not, that's a microphone. And you can throw it around, too. <laughs> I love it. Um, we're, I've just been establishing and building our infrastructure ah. for our internal communications function yeah. over the last 18 months or so. And I hadn't originally done a benchmark, which I mm -hmm. should have, but I'm going to go back and do one now. Um, I know you talked about doing your internal communications comprehensive survey. Yeah. And it seems to me like it could get awfully long. Yeah. What do you? What are your tips and yeah. what do you recommend? Or do you have any examples of how we can benchmark yeah. on our different channels that we've now implemented? Right. Yeah. Don't do that now. Um, I. You, you want information if you're in the start of the journey. So I. You know, think about the maturity of departments that there are different solutions along the way. So if you're at the early stages, which good for you. Congratulations. How exciting. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, I would do some some qualitative work, and if there's a minimal, a little bit of quantitative that you can do, I'd have some conversations with leaders about what's most important. I'd just do some basic listening, and then also use the knowledge that you have mm -hmm. to make some basic decisions about where do we start, how do we build, mm -hmm. knowing that part of your plan is a year from now, you're gonna do a quantitative, you're gonna do more comprehensive, but we're gonna walk first. We're going to do lots of listening. We're going to make some. Uh, we're going to create some some early wins, mm -hmm. and then we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a conceptual answer. Hopefully that's helpful to you. It is, and, and I think we've actually done that over the last yeah. 18 months. We did a lot of listening, and so we have established some channels. Uh huh. Great. And, and now I want to go back and see how effective these things are, and where we have gaps, or where we can move forward yeah. with improvements. So maybe you want to do a mini version okay. of to look at the system, but but you need something really simple cost effective, right. but that is, looks at the whole system where you're gonna be able to say, there are three big things we need to do mm -hmm. to take the next leap, to take the next big step forward in our communication system. So maybe there's a mini, a smaller version of the survey, that, a survey that could be helpful for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Dave, but, I think we've got a question from the, the app. Uh, channeling my inner Richard Dawson here. Um, so uh, this question, Dave, it's an intake process is great when initiated well before the actual message is sent, but often this process is skipped when there's a need for communicating immediately, like the same day. 
Uh, how do I change be the behavior of the leaders and functions I support so they inform me yeah. of upcoming communications in yes. advance? Right. Um, okay. So, so same day communication need. Um, I would meet the need as best you can that day and also tee up that. There's a way that we work as a team to be most effective and helpful for you that you want to sit down with them after this happens to talk about what that's like. So you're sort of recontracting after that sort of emergency happens. Um, the other thing to do too is I would also get some clarity around what's driving. I was just with a client where this happened. And I said, what is driving the sense of urgency for today? Because I feel like, um, you know, do we feel empowered to say, I need time to do quality work? Mr. Ms. Leader, I hear you. And I need time to do quality work. We have a process in the department. We want to leverage a couple of the, you know, the, the thinking. So I think the other thing to ask Two can be, what's driving this timing? Do they really need it today? In the case I was at the client, they're like, well, no, we could use it in three days. Well, gosh, we could do higher quality work if we had three days. And by the way, I've got some questions for you to help us get the product right the first time for you. So it's about having that kind of conversation, and in many cases, thinking about how do you recontract with that leader. So you know you're, you're going to be helpful, you want to be service oriented, but you're going to recontract in many ways. Great question. Hey. Any other questions from the floor? Any uh, anybody? Dave, do we have any other yeah, questions from the There's app? a couple over there. But oh, let me we got on. a question here. Hello. Um, I was just wondering, you know, as a younger communications professional, yes. how do you recommend kind of building that credibility with the leaders that you work with so that oh, you can effectively right um, work with them? Yeah. Uh, one quick thing before I answer your question. I forgot, I've got a raffle. I brought some fun prizes. So I'm going to pass around this lovely crystal bowl. Uh, and it, it, you guys may do the raffle later, but I brought um, some sets of books for your teams um, to raffle off. So if you want to participate, just throw this in here, your card in there. Um, to answer your question, um, my best piece of advice is speak up. Play to win. I can't tell you how many times I'm at the table with junior people, and they are silent. Speak up, share your point of view. It may be right, it may be wrong, but either way, if you have something of value to share, say it. It may be a great learning for you. They're like, holy cow, that was totally inappropriate, and you'll get some feedback and coaching. Fine, that will probably not happen. However, chances are you got something there that is of value for the group. Speak up. You've got to play to win. We need more communication professionals that are in it to win it. Like, if you're at the table, you need to demonstrate why the heck you're at that table. Because if you're at the table and you don't say anything in that meeting, you may not be at that table again. If you're at the table, you need to speak up. So that's my best piece of advice. I mean, play to win. Jump in. It may not be perfect. doesn't need to be perfect. But go for it. You've, chances right. are you got a lot Dave, of ideas. Yeah. Great. Question from a couple the other questions. The, the next two are pretty similar. Can we get a copy of the leader communicator platform to use as an example or, or the playbook? Um, is, is that proprietary or people are uh, it, Sure. If folks, if, if there's any of the stuff that you want, feel free to just follow up with me and I'm happy to help you. Okay. Um, we've got a generic version of the platform I can, I can share. And so there, there are ways to share client information without um, uh, divulging uh, confidential information. I think we've got time for one or two more. So if anyone has a question on the floor. Let's <laughs> throw it. Oh, no. Um, I guess a lot, of the, a lot of the challenges that we have is, is having such a big workload and, and a lot of these immediate jobs yeah. that we're doing day to day. Yeah. And a lot of the things that I'm seeing um, on, your, on your slideshow are great. And they're, they're, it's, it, it seems like a lot of um, thought on the front end has been put into that. How do you get to a place where you can do that thinking through and processing yeah. on the front end? Yeah, great question. It's the typical manager's dilemma. How do you take care of today? How do you plan for the future? And so given your workload, how do you think about and carve out time and resources to be able to do that, knowing that the investment that you're making in planning is going to help you for today soon, but it is an investment. And chances are there's stuff you're doing today that if you were more planful and purposeful, chances are you might not be doing some of that. And so 
how do you bite the bullet in some cases and say, we're going to carve out some time to do some of this work. Here's where we're going to start. Here's what this looks like. Um, and in, in some cases, you may need a partner at the table to do that, at least to get you jump, you know, jump started. You can, and maybe there's someone from an OD perspective inside your organization that can help you get jump started with some of that planning. Um, could be a, an external consultant who could help you. I mean, there are lots of options that you have to be able to think about how do you start being planful. Right. Yeah, I've got another one over here, Dave. So. Um, how do you cope with stakeholders who see awareness as an outcome as opposed to uh, as a uh, outcome as opposed to say business outcomes? Yeah. You talked to, talked about that before. Yeah, yeah, good good question as well. I, um, for me, it's all about teaching and coaching moments. How do we use that opportunity as a teaching and coaching moment when the leader says, "Well, I just want to raise awareness about this," and I can say, "Terrific, awareness is is one one piece." But that awareness to achieve what? And notice again, all my questions are totally open. -ended. So I'm leaving room for that leader to be able to, to, to jump in. I may need to ask the question in a different way. Hey, you know, let's talk about, how about if, let me come at this in a different way for you. How about let's talk about success? What will change in the business? What will be different in the business? That's what an outcome is when, we're, when we've raised awareness and done all these things. So for me, it's about, how do we have teaching and coaching moments where we're having real dialogue with leaders, where we are stepping to the plate and holding our shoulders back and saying, there's information I need here to be successful for you, for our organization. And I'm going to make it as painless as possible for you. I'm going to be mindful of your time. And I'm going to need some of that up front. So I think the dialogue and conversation is the best way to, to get at it. Great. I think. Um, I think we're, unless, do we have a high vote uh, question? Mm. Could s sneak in, otherwise. Yeah, I we'll think get we'll... one more. Okay. Um, so um, for upcoming employee engagement surveys, do you have specific questions related to communications that are helpful to add, or is it a separate communication survey preferred? Uh, People yeah. are worried about survey burnout? Yeah. So yes, uh, so not to survey burnout. So here's my thing uh, about surveys. <laughs> I'm not worried about survey burnout. What I'm worried about is people surveying that they don't, don't do anything with it. That's what I'm worried about. That's what I come back to leaders with. You do these surveys and you're like, ah, I don't like the results. We're not going to communicate them. Oh my goodness, why did we do this research in the first place? <laughs> because what the research does is it, we hold a mirror up to ourselves and it helps us know we're doing this well and you know what? We got stuff to fix. But the cool thing is we've identified what we need to fix and what some of the opportunities are. Um, the first part of the question, so communications. So the key outcomes from a communication perspective that I think are critical to get on engagement surveys are around, and in many cases they're already built in, some of the, the better ones. I get the information I need to do my job well. I am willing to advocate on behalf of the organization. I mean, those are the two sort of most common outcomes that we look at, but I also want to know about line of sight. I know how I can fit in. I, as employee, know how I can fit in, which means that I see myself, I can articulate how what I do connects to the larger strategies of the organization. Dave, did I get all those parts of the? You did. It was yeah. a multi-part question. Good, good job. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's good. Excellent. Okay, Terrific. folks. Terrific. Um, let's give a, uh, we're out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> Big round of applause. Great. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. I don't know about you, but my head is uh, bursting. There are lots of great ideas uh, from North Star. I love that idea for, for strategy and artifacts for one-pagers. Um, particularly what resonated for me was uh, the whole idea about outcomes, because that's the first thing as a, as a solution vendor uh, we ask uh, prospects is what are the business outcomes you're trying to drive? So um, uh, thanks for sharing all that.